Hey third graders, this is Mr. Roney from the Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship, and today is all about solving two-step word problems. So, there's a few things we're going to do today. One, I'm going to introduce you to the RDW strategy, which stands for Read, Draw, and Write. The second thing we're going to do is practice solving a one-step word problem, and then we're going to practice solving two two-step word problems. Now a two-step word problem is a word problem where we're going to have to do subtraction, addition, and then maybe you might have to multiply after that. So it's a problem where you're going to have to use two operations. You might have to multiply first and then subtract at the end, or any combination of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we're going to have to make sure we have those down first before we go to the word problems. Because the word problems, you got to make sure you know how to do all those things. So first of all, let's go to the read, draw, write strategy, and let's talk about what that is. So in front of me and in front of you, you see a picture of the read, draw, and write strategy. There are three steps to this, and they're just like they sound. The first part is reading the problem and underlining the important stuff. And we have to make sure we know what the problem is asking us to find. Next, we're going to draw a math picture of the problem and label different parts of our picture. And finally, we're going to write a number sentence to go with the story. And we're going to write an answer to the question. And we're going to make sure we label our answer with words. So let's get to it. Let's start with a one-step word problem before we go to two-step word problems. Let's try out our RDW strategy now. Okay, so here's our first math problem today. And it says, the art class has 27 students and the music class has 34 students. How many more students are in music class than in art class? So let's underline the important parts of that after we read it. We know art class has 27 students. That's going to be important. We also know music class has 34 students. That's probably going to be important. And then it says how many more students are in music class than in art class. So that final part, how many more students, is are going to be our final answer. So when we hear how many more, that's a good signal that it's going to be a subtraction problem. Now to draw a picture of this, the way that I think this would work best is in a number line. So I'm going to draw a number line, and then I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, here's our number line. And feel free to draw this number line and pause the video if you want to draw it along with me. One thing I forgot to mention before is the reason I have this read, draw, write strategy next to us is I want to check off each piece as we do it. So we already read the problem and underlined the important parts. So I'll put a nice check mark there. Now we're doing the drawing part. So 27 students in music class, or 27 students in art class, excuse me, and 34 students in music class. Now that we have our number line, it'll make a little bit more sense what we need to do. The next step, since it's a subtraction problem, is we want to start at 34 students and see how many jumps it takes for us to get all the way back down to 27. That will tell us what the difference between 34 students and 27 students is, and then we'll have our answer. So let's do that together. You can count with me if you want. 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27. Okay, so now we have all our jumps. Let's count how many jumps we had to make there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So that tells us that... We jumped seven times. Whoa, what happened there? We jumped seven times. And that tells us we have seven more students in 
music class than an art class. So we drew our picture. One thing you could have done here is you could have written the names of the class. So we know music class is up here with 34 students. And we know art class is down here with 27 students. But now that we have our answer, seven students, it's time to write our final answer. And I'm going to get my text box out to write this in a more efficient way. OK, so I typed out my answer and I wrote, there are seven more students in music class than in art class. And what I like to do here is circle my answer when I'm done. Read, draw, and write. Let's move on to the next one, and let's try this strategy with a two-step word problem. It's going to be challenging, but I think we can do it. All right, time for our first two-step problem. This means we're going to have to do two different operations in order to solve it. Let's pay close attention while we read it and underline the important parts. So here's the next one. Mary bought four boxes of markers and two extra markers. That's going to be important. Each box had five markers in it. How many markers did she buy in all? So when we're answering a question about how many she bought in all, we're probably going to be using multiplication or addition here. So the first part here we want to solve is how many boxes or how many markers did she get in the four boxes with five markers each? So a picture that I think makes a lot of sense here is a tape diagram. And I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So we draw something that looks like this, a little rectangle. And then we're going to divide it into four pieces to represent the four boxes of markers that she bought. And each box had five markers in it, so five. Another box has five, another box has five, and another box has five. So basically we have four times five, or five plus five plus five plus five. I love counting by fives, and I know in third grade most of you love counting by fives too. So let's do that together. Five, 10, 15, and 20. So all of these together, represent 20 markers that she got in those boxes. Now you might be tempted to stop here, but there is one more step. Remember these two extra markers? Yeah, we have to add those two extra markers. And for this one, we don't really need to draw another picture. We can just add two extra markers to our group of 20 that we already have. 20 plus 2 equals 20 two. And forgive my handwriting. Those are not sixes. Those are twos. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. So we drew our picture and we labeled the different parts. Actually, we didn't label it. What, what I really should have done there is said four boxes to represent each one of these boxes here. So now we know our answer is 22 markers. Let's write a number sentence that goes with that. We'll write it right here. We'll, we will say, I'll make the size a little bit bigger for you. We will say, Mary bought 22 markers in all. And I restated the question when I wrote that there. And like last time, Let's check it off when we finish it, and circle our answer. Now that wasn't too bad. Let's try one more together. OK, we're back with our third problem here to practice the read, draw, and write strategy. Here we go. Let's make sure to underline the important parts, just like we did in the last two. Students collected 12 red apples and 12 green apples. 
probably important. Although, you know what? The color is usually not important in these problems. I'm going to cross that off because I already know what the question is and the color is not going to matter. They put all the apples into bags, putting six apples in each bag. How many bags of apples did they have? So this one's a little bit tougher because it's asking about how many bags of apples. Six apples in each bag. So first, let's find out how many apples we have all together. And here, a tape diagram is going to work just fine again. So for our first tech tape diagram, let's divide it into two. Because you, we, know, we know students collected two groups of 12 apples. So one is the 12 red, and another one is the 12 green. And I know I said to erase the green and the red colors, but we can still label them here, actually. That might be helpful. R for red and G for green. And all together, 12 plus 12, or 12 times 2. Actually, let's make that 12 plus 12, because most of us are still a little bit more comfortable with addition. 12 plus 12 equals 2 plus 2 is 4. No need to carry anything. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. 24 apples total. Okay, so now that we have 24 apples, we can make another tape diagram. Okay, so we know we'll have 24 here at the top. Now it's saying they put all the apples into bags and they put six apples in each bag. So let's draw a picture here and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we make sure we don't lose this. 24 in the top and down in the bottom of our tape diagram we have to figure out how many bags okay so let's count by adding six okay so if we put six apples in that bag we got one bag there six apples in another bag we have another bag there 6 plus 6 is 12. So we haven't done all 24 yet. we got to keep going. Let's add another bag of 6. 6 in this bag. 12 here plus another 6 is 18. And let's keep going. Add another bag of 6. 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. Plus another 6 is 24. So now we've put six apples in each bag. Now we just have to count how many bags we have. I'm going to zoom out one more time. One bag, two bags, three bags, and four bags. Okay, so we have four bags of apples all together. I'm going to move my face over here and let's write the answer to our question. The student had four bags of apples and let's circle our answer, check off that we did each step and check that out. We just solved two two-step word problems. So I know this is a long video. Let me just review what we went over. We learned read, draw, write. Really good strategy for two-step word problems. We learned that two-step word problems were word problems that we had to do one math operation, and then we had to keep going and do two math operations. And they can either be addition, subtraction, division, or multiplication. And we learned some ideas for how to draw our math problems. So I'm going to let you go here. I will see you back here on the next day that we do two-step word problems. Hopefully that's soon. Goodbye, everybody, and good luck on the Google form. If you paid attention to this video, you already have a few of the answers you'll need.
Bye, everyone.